Thomas Jefferson Anderson composed the chamber concerto Remembrances in 1988. The piece was commissioned by Cleveland State University for the Cleveland Chamber Symphony and its music director, Edwin London. From my research, this is only the second performance of this piece since its premiere. This 18 minute piece is structured around solos or duets for each instrument in the ensemble. The players have done a fabulous job and every solo has been memorized. And to add a bit of theater, they walk to the front of the stage for their solos. The piece has the following structure. An introduction, which is about a two minute tutti section for the entire ensemble. And then a cello solo, a bassoon and string bass duet, a piano solo, a harp solo, trumpet and percussion duet, a violin solo, and then a large central tutti section marked theme and variations, and then a clarinet and flute duet, a trombone solo, and a horn and viola duet to close the piece. Interestingly, these solos are all notated as satellite tempi. This is the actual marking in the score. Satellite, in this case, refers to a tempo and meter that is separate from the rest of the ensemble. You'll notice that the soloists stand behind me and don't really attempt to coordinate with me or the ensemble. For centuries and centuries, Western music has been organized vertically through the use of common meter. Many composers in the past 50 or so years have pushed music through new developments in notation to free up the vertical or metric alignment of musical events. Composers such as John Cage, Witold Ludoslavsky, Harrison Bertwistle, and many others, including many jazz artists, have all found different ways to create rhythmic and metric freedom. T.J. Anderson is no exception, and in this piece, he created a unique and distinct approach with the use of satellite tempi. For example, in the first solo, Anderson has the cellist playing in 3-4 meter for 31 measures at a tempo of 96, which would be roughly one minute and three to five seconds. At the same time, the ensemble is playing in 4-4 four, four for 20 measures at a tempo of 72, which should be roughly the same amount of time, one minute and three to five seconds, factoring in for some tempo elasticity and rubato. This separation of accompaniment and soloist exists for most of the solo sections. At other times, as in the trombone solo, the flute and clarinet duet, and the viola and horn duet, Anderson abandons measure and meter altogether and notates the musical events spatially, allowing the players to create rhythmic motion by interpreting the spatial relationships freely on the page. The end result is this amazing musical world that feels rhythmically rich, ornate, and layered, but always free. The separate entities or satellites always come together with a cohesive cadence at the end of each section. The other infectiously attractive character of this piece is the stylistic pluralism. Every section or solo is in an entirely different style. The cello solo, for example, is in the style of a Baroque solo suite, while the trumpet and percussion duo is riffing on jazz or swing elements. In the central tutti section marked theme and variations, the style goes from poking fun at Hindemith to gestures that invoke the sounds of a big band, then on to a section that feels more like free and wild improvisation, with a final cadence that could be straight from Dvorak. As Richard Dreyer from the Boston Globe noted, T.J. Anderson is an individual and compelling compositional voice. He need not fear the charge of eclecticism because his personality is so strong that it can unify diverse elements. We are so pleased to bring to life T.J. Anderson's chamber concerto, Remembrances.